What's happening guys? It's Nick from S2 Strategic Defense. Hope all is well. You guys are in my garage with me today doing a little bit of dry fire practice. And this is kind of an impromptu video that was inspired by another worthless debate that's happening on social media in a shooting group that I'm a part of where people are bickering back and forth about that low left and low right shot placement and what causes that and what doesn't cause that. Kind of a boring debate in the first place, but I want to do a little bit of testing and analysis with you guys today. First, let me give you a little bit of background. If you guys have that problem where you're shooting low left and low right, and I kind of feel like there's a bad joke waiting in there somewhere like, hey guys, are you shooting low and left? There's a pill for that, but that's a different video. If you guys are shooting consistently low left or low right, that's typically attributed to three different things. One is the placement of the trigger finger on the trigger. Number two is the grip itself. And number three is trigger slap. Now I take trigger slap off of the table in most circumstances. Ma uh, majority of the time, a lot of trigger slap will push the gun more downward than it does out to the side. So unless I see that steep angle, then typically it's in the first two, either the placement of the trigger finger on the trigger itself, or it's in the grip or some combination of the two. So inside of that debate, there's another debate. Does that trigger finger, the depth of that trigger finger, make a difference? Does that influence the muzzle of the gun at all or not? And some folks say it does, like me. Other people say it totally does not. You could be knuckle deep in that and there's not a problem. And I really don't buy into that. So we're going to do a quick test today. We're going to do 15 shots of dry fire. Five of that is going to be with very little trigger finger. Five of that is going to be with really deep trigger finger. And then five of that is going to be what should be about appropriate. So in the middle of the pad of the finger and let's see what kind of data we get on the Mantis X and take a look at it and go from there. So give me a second. I'm going to go ahead and get set up and we'll go from there. Okay guys, here we go. I have the Mantis X10 that's mounted to my Glock 19 X. I'm in a sterile environment. Nothing to worry about there. I'm on an empty gun, no magazine, clear chamber. So we're good to go. Test number one, we're going to be doing five shots dry fire of very little trigger finger. I'm going to use just enough to get over the trigger safety that's on my Glock and let's go from there. So let's get the Mantis started. And here we go. Here's five shots. One. Two. Really felt it on that one. Three. Four. and five. Okay, so that's test number one using very little trigger finger. Okay guys, here we are on test number two where we're going to be using a lot of trigger finger. Let's see how this goes. Here we go. Mantis is running. Five shots. One. Two. Three. Four and five. Okay, so that's five shots using a lot of trigger finger. I was actually past that first knuckle almost into the middle of the second uh, pad, let's just say, and I could really see how the front sight was moving off to the right quite a bit. Here's test number three with the appropriate amount of trigger finger. Here we go, five shots. One. Two, three, four, felt like I pushed that one a little bit, and five. Okay, so that's five shots. Now, let's wrap this up and let's go into the Mantis and see what the data tells us. Okay, guys, let's take a look inside the Mantis and see what the data actually tells us. So I'm going to click over here. I'm going to go over to where it says history, and the first round that we did was using very little trigger finger. And so that's gonna be right here. Okay, so you can see how the correctional chart first and foremost lines up and you can see how the red is pretty much at that seven o'clock to eight o'clock position. So let's click on that real quick. And what does that tell us right away? It says too little trigger finger, all right? What was the test? We didn't use a lot of trigger finger. And so when we come over here and the first thing that it shows us is that. Now, I'm going to click over to this side where it shows us all five shots over here. 
And what I want you to see is the yellow lines. The yellow lines is that 150 millisecond or 200 millisecond before the shot breaks. And you can see that yellow line is pretty extended, which means there's a lot of movement happening right before that trigger decides to break. Let's go over here real quick. And we could take a look at this uh, bullseye chart over here. And let's go to this shot right here. Where is that? That's at that seven o'clock pull. If you guys can see where that white X is, that's a low and left. Let's take a look at shot number three, low and left. Shot number four, low and left. Shot number five, really low, really left. Okay, so we know that that's what happened with very little trigger fingers, okay? Now, let's go into the second test, which had the, uh, a lot of trigger finger, and I was almost down to the middle of the entire finger. So let's take a look, this just looks terrible. All of the red is on the right hand side, so let's click on that. And the first thing that it tells us is too much trigger finger, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this back out. Let's go over to this screen again. Take a look at those yellow lines shot by shot. You could see in that final 150 millisecond or 200 millisecond, whatever that is, that there's a lot of movement happening inside the front of the muzzle before the shot breaks. Okay, let's come back over here and look at the shot by shot. We're shooting high and right, high and right, high and right, high and right, high and right. So what's happening is, let's go back to this real quick and you can kind of see where it says thumbing. Thumbing means I'm putting a lot of pressure in with my strong side hand thumb, which is pushing the gun up. If I didn't have that thumbing influence and only had a lot of that trigger finger, it would be pulling the gun down. So my hand's compensating for having that much trigger figure inside of the trigger guard, okay? And so you can see that there's problems happening with too much or too little trigger finger. Now, let's go over to the last five rounds. Okay, and I'm still kind of adjusting over here. Uh, let's go shot by shot. First and foremost, take a look at how little there is in that yellow line, that 150 to 200 milliseconds before the shot breaks, very little movement happening over there, okay? When I come back over here, you can kind of take a look. Maybe I was a little bit on the deep side over there, maybe not. And then if we go shot by shot over here, it's breaking dead center. It's breaking just a little bit high and right, a little bit high and right, a little bit to the right, and then dead center again. So we have much better averages, much less movement in the muzzle of the gun, and we're just overall more accurate having the appropriate amount of trigger finger on that trigger shoe. So the data doesn't lie to us. Now, I wanna show you guys a close up of something else real quick. If I use very little trigger finger and I'm just enough to be able to get to that trigger safety, and I start to move that trigger back, if I'm trying to pin that trigger back, I'm finding that wall, I don't know if you guys can kind of see this, but the gun's moving to the left, which means I'm pushing it out to the side. If I use a lot of trigger finger and I get knuckle deep on this thing, okay, watch what happens. I'm gonna start pinning the trigger back and it's gonna start pulling the gun to the right. Can you guys see that? Okay, there you go, all right? And so you guys can do that for yourselves. You could test that for yourselves. All you gotta do is make sure, obviously, you're in a, in a sterile training environment, the gun's safe, but go ahead and stand in front of the firearm, point that thing straight 12 o'clock up and down and start seeing what's happening. You can start to see that the needle's moving, okay? And so very little trigger finger, I can see it goes out to the left. A lot of trigger finger, I can see it pulls to the right. And find that spot that seems to be appropriate for you where the muzzle stays where exactly where it's supposed to be. Now, there's a second part to this thing. Earlier in the video, I said that grip has a lot to do with it. It's not so much grip, it's grip pressure and the placement of that pressure. When we typically hold on a firearm, a lot of beginners consider this pressure between the fingers and the heel of the hand, and they think about this pressure in a lateral sense, left to right. And the truth of it is, is when you grip your firearm, what you're trying to do is bring the back strap of the gun straight back in the heel and holding the gun stable that way, meaning the pressure should be going front to back, front to back, front to back, not left to right. That also helps you with mitigating recoil, having good control, keeping the gun flatter, having faster, more accurate shots. So you guys can do this test for yourselves and see if you guys are having that problem, that low left, low right, here's one way to start diagnosing it and see what's going on. See what's happening with the trigger finger, 
consider where the pressure is going uh, inside of the grip, and I guarantee you that you'll start bringing those groups tighter and tighter back on target. Get your hands on a Mantis X10. Start doing some training with that because that, that data, it simply just doesn't lie. All right, guys, best of luck, good shooting, be safe, and hopefully this helps you guys out.